Wimbiama, 38-10. The performance last night was miraculous. Paolo had a good game as well, but this one is more impressive, so this is the one I'm gonna break down. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Wimby. This is the start of something that could potentially be special, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. As a basketball fan, I hope we all are excited. The first few of these breakdowns I've been trying to have on a positive note, there is definitely some opposite ones coming very soon. We could have had a we could have had a bunch, but I wanted to relax, start the season off on a good note. It is early. You want to you don't want to look too much into something. I didn't want to over exaggerate a bad performance from somebody, and then the next thing I know, they got three consecutive thirty point games. That's not you know that that's not a good look. So this is something that's gonna be consistent before we dive in let's see let's let's take a look at the box score just so y'all can get a little bit familiar with his game uh of last night so Vic played 34 minutes he shot 26 shots he led the entire team in shots the next closest guy was 13 from Jeremy Sohan the second guy in shots was 13 shots behind him I think that's a trend that we want to continue to see throughout the, this year for the Spurs Regardless of how good or bad they are, Vic should definitely dominate the shot attempts. Personally, for me, I would love to see this be Vic 1. And depending on what night it is, you got Devin Vassell or Keldon Johnson being 2 or 3. And then you have, you know, just basically whoever night it is outside of that 3. But I would love to see those 3, and I think we will get that majority of the season. I want the shot diet or the shot distribution between the Spurs to be chopped up between those three. If you take the 100% the shots of the Spurs and you make a pizza, Vic should be getting about 30 to 40% of the shots, meaning every 10 shots the Spurs take, three or four needs to be Vic shots. Then I think 30% goes between Vassell and Keldon Johnson, and that's what, about 70%? Then the last 30% of the shots, you got Sohan, you get a little, a few to Zach Collins, Basically how we see, I think this is a good shot diet. Like he dominates it. He was second and, or really he dominated. And then everybody else collectively was just around each other. 11, 10, 10, 13, 8, 7, 8. Perfect. Closing out. Barely. We gone. This type of situation, I don't mind because he's supposed to, his assignment is to close out anyway. So his responsibility isn't to rebound cool that's what you guys at Collins for now yeah boom this has been an issue I seen somebody say they're not a fan of Jeremy Sohan or how he's played this year one of the biggest issues a lot of people have had with Jeremy Sohan is the fact that he's been playing their point guard this has been available a lot Vic getting out in the open court this is more of a fast break type thing but there's been a lot of situations in the first few games that they've had where Vic may not be it may not, it may not be this clear, right? It may not be this much in stride, this much in transition. But you have a situation where Vic will beat a lot of people, a lot of teams up the court. Or hypothetically speaking, let's just say he don't beat them up there. But look at the look at the last three guys back. None none of these guys just can stop him from getting the ball. So even if it wasn't necessarily a transition fast break this fast with this much pace, if Grayson Allen is the last person on defense. He's matching up with Vic. If Vic seal him or post him, he got to get the ball. It was too, it's was it been too many times in the first few games where a situation like that has happened. Vic is the first person back. There's a couple of defenders, but they're all smaller than him. He got them sealed off. He ready. Give me the ball. And he's been missed. That I defend Vic in because there's nothing he can do there. And that's exactly what I'm saying that I want from Vic. I love the fact that he can make jump shots. I love the fact that one play on here we're going to see where he just catches it, faces up uh, against Eric Gordon, and shoots it literally right over him like he's a cone, and he makes it. I love that he can shoot threes. I like the tween-tween and all that shit, too. But because he's 7'4 and he's so big, you have to give him as many easy buckets as he can get. That's just the name of the game. Every elite score we've ever seen in the league, they get easy buckets they get free throw attempts and then they do the rest of the shit in between but the bulk of your easy the bulk of your points when you look at the history of guys who's led the league in scoring you're going to see free throw rate you're going to see a bunch of easy buckets and then to tie it all together you'll have some spectacular plays where james harden is doing his tween tween step back james harden isn't averaging 36 points off just step backs it's layups free throws and an occasional step back you know, you might get one of those one a quarter, you know what I'm saying? But that's just not something that's sustainable enough to be relied upon at an elite level. So you'll you'll see the shot diet as being easy buckets, lay uh free throws, 
and then you'll have your half court buckets and things like that. So this was good to see. <clears throat> Quick nine over on. Spurs are gonna be super good when they play with that pace. Um, this is the other part, obviously, being able to shoot that. That's a miss, but this is the element of his game that makes you just so in awe. You know what I mean? Literally a simple play. It's just simple, but a guy this size, you know what I mean? Like imagine if Rudy Gobert could do this. The way we think of Rudy, his value, the trajectory of Rudy's career would be extremely different if Rudy could make this shot. Man, if Sabonis could make this shot on a consistent basis. He he takes them, he can make them, but if Sabonis could shoot it like Vic, if Mitchell Robinson, if my Knicks, Mitchell Robinson don't even need to shoot threes. If he could just make these shots, he'd be a different player. If Clint, um, if Clint Capella can make these shots right here, we're talking about different values, trajectories, different everything about the way we talk about these players. I love this. The only thing I the only thing I'm gonna say, and I understand, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to hard press it, but I'm gonna say it throughout the course of this breakdown. Well, Vic has to learn. I'm not saying he's wrong for this because it's a lot going on. He is their best player from day one. He is their face of the franchise. Not only is the face of the franchise, they're obviously pushing Vic to be a future face of the league. Like the excitement around him is bigger than just being the face of the San Antonio Spurs. He's supposed to, he's, he's the next greatest thing, something we've never seen. He's supposed to take the game all over, right? And they're figuring out certain things as they go. And he has to learn certain things because he's so young. This is a young team. It ain't like he playing with a bunch of vets. Who is the vet on the Spurs? Doug McDermott? Who would y'all say the vet is? Is it Doug McDermott? Is Devontae Graham still on the Spurs? He Is he their vet? <laughs> y'all get the point I'm making, though. There's like, there's not like a real vet that's putting their arm around him. All his vets are probably below 30. The point that I'm making is he can get this shot any time he wants. This ain't nothing but a pick and pop in the mid-range. What I want to start seeing Vic do is make these dudes pay. These are your enemies. You're in warfare. Do not let these dudes get anything that can bail them out. This shot is very makeable, and he's going to make a few. He's going to make a bunch in this game. But Josh Okogie will prefer him to shoot these tough-ass shots, contested shots, or whatever, versus really trying to figure out. Because they're going to sin. They're not going to just let Josh Okogie be one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to overly help look they're ready as soon as this man catching the ball they are ready he's two feet in the paint zach collins went three or three in this game he hasn't shot the ball particularly good from three over the course of this game he has a foot in the paint they ready make them pay you know what i'm saying not a bad shot it's not a bad shot at all not trying to say it's a bad shot it's just a shot that he can get at any time it's the same thing you've heard me say about joel and b i've said this about luca uh Giannis. There's just certain shots that you can get at any time. Put pressure on the defense to make them really feel you. But they up 13-2. They rolling. I get it. It's natural. He can make the shot. It's just that that's going to be something I'm going to highlight a lot, make or miss, of just making them pay. Nice pick and roll. It's the other element that you appreciate. One of the things about unicorns that I've had a bone to pick with is like unicorn players over the last few years, they're such unicorns that they start to just do the unicorn shit. And what I mean by that is guys his size who can shoot the ball, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, Jaron Jackson, uh, other guys y'all probably can think of. The unicorns, we say. But then they start to dip into the unicorn shit too much. Where like there was a time where Porzingis played with the Mavs. And Przingis was popping. He was popping 90% of the time. All he did was pop. It didn't matter. It didn't even make sense to pop. Sometimes he just had an easy roll and he would get a little dunk or he would have a mismatch and he's popping. And it's like, Chris Stapps, why are you popping? That dude is 6'2". Why, why are you popping when you was going to get Donovan Mitchell on your back? Why did you pop and take a jump shot? Roll, catch, dunk, two, layup, foul, whatever. But... Everything don't have to be a pop. And then it's like those type of things started to make them be those unicorn players not be much of a unicorn because they started to just veer away from the things that make you a unicorn. A unicorn is a guy who could stretch the floor, rim protect, uh, expose a mismatch, dunk at the rim. You know what I mean? A, a, a unicorn is not just a seven footer who just pop every single time and he's taking threes, 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 threes. No, that's don't. That's just a stretch. Unicorn is the motherfucker who one possession, he pick and pop, knock down a three. Now they're playing him for the pop. Boom, switch, I roll, and now I got a little guard on me, and then I can make him pay. Now the defense is like, what the hell do we do? He can shoot the three. He can expose a mismatch. He can catch a lob. He can shoot over the shoulder. 
mid range, drop step. How do we do that's where the unicorn is supposed to be? Man, we send a double, he can make a pass. Nikola Jokic, real unicorn. Because what are you doing? Even though this is simple, I personally love the fact that he's willing to roll. Ask for that motherfucker ball and go up. I want I'm out of selfishness. I want to see all of these be dunks. Anytime he catches it, this should just be a dunk. That's just selfish, though. That's just selfish. Like, don't drop that bitch. Dunk that motherfucker on Nurkic's head and make him feel the effect of playing against Wimby. Strength. Gonna hear this a lot. Good thing about him, he's making it work from phase one. We knew ever since he was entering the draft and about to get drafted, he was gonna have to put on weight, he was gonna have to get stronger. This is why Kevin Durant, this is supposed to be easy money. You did the right move, step through, uh, moved him out the way. But that arm coming down slaps the ball out of your hands because you're just not you're not strong enough yet. But the NBA is in trouble because you can buy strength. You can get on a strength and conditioning program. You can put X amount of hours in the gym. So we know strength is coming. It's coming. And soon, this won't be an option. This is going to be a foul. And the worst thing you want, the last thing the NBA want is for this dude to get so strong like Giannis, where this is an and one. That's a, potent, that's a potential. Like in this first year, maybe even the second year, next year, these are going to be, you can slap the ball out of his hands, send him to the free throw line, or make him feel you, and make him think twice. Man, by year three, that may not be a luxury. This may be an and one where he fights through that and can control himself and still have enough strength to finish through this contact where that's an and one. Because that's how Giannis is now. You know what I'm saying? Good way to fight for the ball, Charles Bassey. Give him to him. Again, selfish reasons. I want that to be a dunk. If I was his coach, these have to be dunks. Just statements. You know what I'm saying? Just make a statement. A dunk, scream, slap the fucking backboard, break the rim. It's just a certain aggression that he has to play with because you want him to strike fear. Every time the Spurs step on the court, Whoever's they big or even the entire defensive unit, they need to be fearful. They need to be like, oh, fuck. What's the GTA thing? Oh, fuck. Here we go again. With CJ, that, if I'm Coach Pop and the staff, that's what I want. Every time we come to the court, they like, oh, shit, man. You got to deal with this motherfucker, man. Oh, dunk that motherfucker. This is an open lane. Dunk it. Don't just drop that bitch. Make them feel you. But go away this fight. For the ball, Charles Bassey. Easy buckets like we talked about. Easy buckets. Get him as many of those as possible. Back with Durant again. It's the same play, I think. Boom. Slap it out of his hand. Fight for it, Charles Bassey. Give it to him. Get you an easy one. If we can get if we get eight of those, that's 16 points already. Plus another eight free throws. You go seven to eight, that's 23 points. That's the type of game plan I'm thinking. We give Vic seven, eight layups, 14, 16 points. Another eight points from the free throw line. That's now 24 points per game, and you ain't done nothing. You ain't done nothing hard yet. 24 points a game, you ain't done nothing hard. Now, throughout the course of four quarters, you hit a three. You hit a mid-range. You hit another three. That's eight extra points. That's 32 points. And all you did was hit three shots in four quarters that made you really have to do anything. That's how easy the game should be for him in his career. Eight shots, that's dunks and layups, eight free throw attempts, and then the rest of your points coming from all of the, the extra shit, the bag, the step back, the turnaround, the threes, the pick and pop, all of that shit. Now, now you're a 30 point score without breaking a fucking sweat, if you ask me. Bail out. Bail out. Not a bad shot, but come on, man. Who is this? Is that Drew Eubanks? Stop playing on me, Vic. Drew Eubanks can't fuck with you, dog. Phase two. Phase two is that the Spurs are going to have to help him realize he don't have to catch the ball out here so far. Right now, through these first five games, a lot of, a lot of shit with Vic is starting out so far. It's going to take so much energy to fight and bang because they're bigger than him because of the strength factor. That is like, get him the ball here. Get him the ball right here. It's going to be so much easier and so much less stress on his body to get here to here versus he trying to fight and bang with Drew Eubanks from the three-point line. Ugh, ugh, ugh. It's just, it's just a, it's just a low percentage shot. It's a makeable shot, not the ho most horrific shot. But, like, I would rather get him, let him start from here. If he starts from here... It's a whole different thing. I wouldn't be mad if they start realizing like, hey, Trey Jones, you can just slide right here. 
he kicks it out, he reestablishes himself, all of that, you still have about eight, eight to seven seconds on the shot clock. Give him the ball right here and give him the last seven seconds to really establish himself. But this just doesn't look like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just kind of clunky. It could just be a lot better to get a better shot. Love this. This is what I'm saying. When you have a 7-4 freak, why, why, like, do this. And I love Trey Jones. Celebrate for your teammate. We here, motherfucker. We got Vic. We got a Vic. We got a 2K character. We got a 2K player. How many times in Drew Eubanks' career is he really guarding a big and got to deal with this? A back screen on a lob. They're not used to having to guard it. This is like high school shit. A lot of high school teams, the first play of their game is some shit like this or college. Jimmy Butler used to have a play like this with the Bulls, I believe. But like the big, Joel Embiid ain't coming off no shit like this for no lob or no shit like that. But like Drew Eubanks, they probably had to guard this shit in Lord knows how many years. But yeah, fuck it. Easy, another easy bucket. It's just easy. It takes him no effort. He ain't had to fight through nothing. He ain't had to bump with nobody. Just catch it, dunk it, we on. That's the luxury you have when you have a 7-4 demigod on your team. This is the play I like. See? See where he's catching it from? Look how low he is. He right there. He shouldn't have to fight with Eric Gordon from No, get him low. As low as possible. So all he do is catch, turn, and shoot. There's like no wasted movement. He didn't have to dribble. He didn't have to bang. Nothing was wasted. Let's just get this man a ball, which... Boom, and we slid it down, reestablish, face turn. You don't exist. I love that. That's probably my favorite play of the game. But, see, like, even outside of all of the shit, when he hit the threes and all that, that's, like, my favorite because it's just simple. Basketball is supposed to be easy. It's cool when you're able to make difficult shots and tough shots and show your bag, but the name of the game is to generate the easiest points you can i'm always going to want to take a layup over a step back mid-range jumper if you telling me i could just get the layup i want the layup <laughs> what the fuck am i doing all that shit for if i don't have to the luxury and the the phenomenal part about it is when you don't have the luxury of getting the easy basket and you have a bag like Kyrie, fucking um kobe post fadeaway michael jordan jason tatums and all of that shit is then when you can go into your bag and still make something happen. But if you have the option to get an easy bucket, you should always fight for that. Again, better than fighting from him here to there. But damn, can we not get him somewhere closer? He getting pushed out. Stay there. This is where they're trying to get it. Eubanks is going to push him closer to the three-point line. Look, now he's all the way out here. I don't even know the result, but that's a tough shot. Okay, he missed. If Drew Eubanks is holding him down like this, it's going to be tough against other guys who are going to be a little bit more bigger than Drew, a little bit more stronger. And again, my point of the first play, one, some of the first plays of the game, this is just always going to be here. It's still 16 seconds on the shot clock. If all fails, you dump it back to him. Go, go reestablish yourself. But again, when you're up 23... Sometimes you take dumb shots like that. But then as a young team, what you start to realize is that that's how you open up the door for a team like Phoenix to come back. That's exactly how Phoenix was able to get back into the game because they settle for shots like that. Not just Vic, but a lot of them. Beautiful. So that's damn near a make. That's just the, nothing you can do better. I love the fact that he tried to roll. It's crowded. Just step back out, catch it, pop. That's that's not even contested for him. Drew Eubanks just hit his hip. He didn't even really contest it. I like that shot. Big fella run the floor. Good way to reward your big for running. Again, I, w I wish I would have counted. I, I'm, I'm going to go back and try to count how many of those easy buckets he got. How many of his 38 points was just easy buckets like this? He ain't have to bump nobody, post nobody up. You know what I mean? Wasted energy. Just run up the court, catch the ball, and dunk it. It requires nothing for him. Post KD up. Again, this problematic. Problematic. Hakeem Elijah want to tell guys when they work out with him, make your move 
on the catch. Make the move on the catch. So what you're going to see him do is like he's waiting to catch the ball, and so the defender is relaxed. Now, once you catch the ball, the defender can tense up on you. But you can catch the defender off guard if you make your move on a catch, meaning while this ball is in the air and it's on its way to him, instead of waiting for the ball stationary like that and coming down with it, make your move now. Right there, he can either turn outside or inside and just go right with the flow. So I'm catching, I'm shooting. Right when I'm catching it, I'm turning and getting into my shot already instead of jumping, coming down with the ball. Now I'm allowing the defense to press up on me and get ready. They're not ready because they're waiting for me to catch the ball to get themselves into it 90% of the time. I've seen Hakeem Olajuwon teach that to Amari Stoudemire, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Carmelo Anthony. If he could just, as he's catching this ball right now, time this to either turn this way, which could be a little tough because you got these three bodies here. Or you could turn to the middle, but like he caught it and then it just it became clunky because the help came and then you got to basically fight over two people. That's just a tough ass shot. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he can get in the gym with Hakeem if he hasn't already. Easy money, man. Easy money. Easy money. We know what that's about. Don't get no better than that. And now you got them arguing with each other. Devin Booker. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. This And that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're getting 24 points a game from layups, dunks, and free throws, you add these type of shots on top of it, and you're, you're talking about it easy. Easy 30 point score. Easily. Easily. But you don't want to have to depend on this shit to be getting you 25 a night. Vic could get 25 a night without having to depend on him making those type of shots. This is just a tough ass shot. I mean, you feeling yourself, you that guy, so you can afford to take these shots. But again, this is like, look how they have him. They keep catching it so far. And not really going no fucking where. Like, I don't know. Again, I'm going I'm to vouch for the fact that turn around, establish a pivot, bounce back to Zach Collins out here, reestablish yourself in a post right here. KD don't want no, no work with you on that block. He don't want no work with you on that block, Vic. KD, much rather you take this shot than to have to guard you right here. But if you turned around and dumped this out to Vic, I mean, to Zach, to reestablish yourself, you still got about eight seconds. Y'all can't see the shot clock. You still got eight seconds right here if you reestablish yourself there. Don't bail them out, man. But it's a process. And you up 22. So I get it. Again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to nitpick. I'm just showing a little thing. I love this. This is probably my favorite play of the game. I know I said the other play. But this is what, this, this is what having a creative player can do. Jumped at it. Grayson Allen, you can't even really be mad at him. He has to he has to respect the fact that he can knock this shot down. He just made two of them before the before halftime. So he gotta respect that shot. Now, boom, agile, quick enough to backdoor him, give and go. Watch the fuck out. Easy buckets. Why am I ever taking a fadeaway on Kevin Durant when I can get these? Just throw it up. I'm gonna catch it. Boom. Why would he why would why would he ever need to post fadeaway? This is we got a fucking demigod, my career created player. I'm fine with that shot. He was open, wide open. Fine with that shot. Why is he wide open? I don't know. Because they went he went under there. Wait, wait, wait. I need to understand what the Suns is doing. Too much of not trying to get book on him, I guess. Book did the right thing. You go under on Sohan. And now, Drew Eubanks trying to chase him. He thought Book was going to switch. No communication. That's what happens when you don't talk on defense. He has an open look. Short because he's probably tired, but that's a makeable shot. So, we we, we fine with that. Love that. Again, we should just do this all game. He missed it so what, though? 
Like that's all. This is like the amount of easy. And I'll, maybe I'm being generous with eight easy shots a game. When he's that's I guess a typical thing. He could probably get twelve between dunks and layups. He can get twelve easy shots a game. I just. It's just it's gonna scary hours in it for the NBA, man. It's scary hours, scary hour, another tough shot. Like why why am I why am I taking this shot when the last few times you scored has been at the rim? I get it. You can make these shots. You can make these shots. We get it. But these shots is why they was able to erase this deficit. You supposed to step on their necks by continuing to just be up in here getting your shit off. But this shit ain't nothing. That that shit ain't really now. You can get that any any that you can get that anytime you want. That shot gonna be there. I guarantee it. That shot is gonna be there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. More of this, please. Get low. Don't let them push you out here. Yep. Don't let them push you out here like you did early in the game. And now that length is just too much. Reverse Uno on his edge. George George Gervin. Dr. J style. Book is on you. Throw that fucking ball, Trey Jones. You know who I am? I'm Victor Wimbyama. How many is that, chat? How many is that, chat? He done had about 15 easy ones. And this is just, this is just, this is just, I guess, he, like, that was just like, I don't know. It's just, just like it's there, so I'm gonna take it. Again, he can make them, so you you can't really be mad at it. But like, I'm gonna say, man, pump fake his ass, throw it to Malachi and dive again, give and go. But again, it's hindsight. You live, you learn. Unstoppable. That's unstoppable. Why would I ever stop doing this? Why am I taking turnaround jumpers when I can do this? And look how close the game got. It's a three-point game. Y'all was just up 18. <laughs> but the air ball threes, the post fadeaway over here, uh, an, a, a, another post fadeaway somewhere else, and now the next thing you know, you know the game ain't as close as, as it ain't. You know, it's a lot closer than it once was. Nail in a coffin. Impressive shot. Love that he can make it. I'm going to just always prefer him to not have to catch the ball out this far against you, Drew Eubanks. But, hey, I don't have nothing bad to say about that. Make his ass pay. He can make it. He's proven he can make those shots. Fuck it. Let it rock. Bang. You got to put your hand up, dog. Don't dump my favorite shots because that's coming out the floor of the offense. Down screen from him, make them switch, catch, rise, no wasted movement, boom. We playing basketball. That's all, that's that's just a set. Incredible game, man. Let's see how his rebounds look because we was talking about the rebounding earlier. Get down in there in the trenches. Yeah, we gone. See, like why he can't like that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he can't leak out and do all this shit, but when he down there, look. When he down there, nobody can really stop. Even if you box him out, he's just so long. So it's like, that's all I be talking about. Give me that shit. Go get it. And you can bring it up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Go get that. Look, give me that. Yeah, it's no reason Vic shouldn't be getting double double uh double doubles each night. Let me get that. I want to see I want to see some contested some more contested these is this there. Let me get that cleanup crew, and he, and he can do this while still having some opportunities to leak out, run the floor. We've seen him running the floor in some of these scoring highlights. Like yeah, give me that. He can get that and just go. Look, he's still running. They can still run. 
Everything don't have to be a leak out. But, I mean, if he is up there guarding it, then, yeah, leak out. Do your thing. Establish position. Be the first person on offense down the floor. You can get you a guard. The last guy, uh, the first guy back for them will be a guard. So you could just post up their guard and, and have a bunch of mismatch bullshit going on. But everything does not have to be leak out constantly 24-7. Two blocks. Um, let me see these two blocks. Clean up crew. Went from. So in the gap defense, because he's 7-4, he's able to play help. He's able to play drive help, guard his man. Be, he, he From this position, he can contest this jump shot, potentially even block it. But he also can help on this cut and drive block. This dude, man, this dude is, is just not fair. It's a cheat code. He can cover so much ground defensively, man. It's just not fair. It's just not fair, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't seen season Vic. Everything is better with time. The best version of things is never the first one because experience is the best teacher you can have. That's why I tell people all the time, man, how do I start my YouTube? How do I start a podcast? Just do it because the, qu the, the, the quicker you do it, the more you get experience. That's the faster you can gain experience. You know what I'm saying? Repetition is the father of learning. And repetition brings experience. And experience brings lessons. And lessons give you all the information you need to be a better version of yourself. So once he gets 30 games on his belt, 60 games on his belt, 82 games on his belt, he'll be able to say, okay, yeah, I can get that shot anytime I want. Why am I, fa why am I doing post turnarounds on Drew Eubanks? When I can just punish him near the rim. Let me stop letting Drew Eubanks push me out to the three-point line. When I'm catching the ball, I'm trying to post up, and they just pushing me out further and further away from the ball. So now I got to uh, use so much more energy to bang and try to post him up and drive on him from the three-point line. No, that's just that just wasted so much energy. It'll come, though. It's going to come. And the fact that he can score 38 with all of those things. With some of these turnaround jumpers, like he, and he still got, we talking about 38-point performance. This is not a game where he had 12, and I'm breaking this shit down because it was bad. Like, I'm highlighting this in a game where he had 38. So if he eliminated some of those things, this is an easy game where he has 50. If he said, oh, let me not take a turnaround, I'm going to throw it back out to Trey, reestablish myself in the post, do a spin move, get to the free throw line, get an easier turn uh, post fadeaway, we're talking about a 50-point performance easily.